risk assets are seeing the strongest rebound since the summer in October. October was a great month for stocks and Bitcoin, and we'll be talking about whether or not this momentum can last. Joining us today is Todd Bubba Horowitz, Chief Market Strategist at BubbaTrading.com, a fan favorite of Kiko. Welcome back to the show, Todd. David, great to be with you. Always a pleasure. And uh, we'll go we'll get into it. And I'll, I'll give you my thoughts, right or wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, right or wrong, we're here to get your thoughts. And your thoughts are always appreciated. So let's start with the by talking about the markets. As I mentioned, stock markets had a nice rebound in October. The S&P 500 is up 7%. The Nasdaq's up 3%. Bitcoin, uh, the other risk asset, is up 4.5%. And uh, gold actually is down 1.5%, so slightly flat. So we're seeing a little bit of risk on appetite where we have been over the last 30 days. What happened? Can this continue? Well, I, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting question, and I don't think we can answer it correctly yet. I, I mean, I will tell you that at the moment, based on my algorithms, I'm long the markets here right now. I'm not really thrilled. From a personal standpoint, I don't think it can exist. I, I think there's too many economic problems that we try to hide from. I think there's, you know, the, the inflation is a killer. There, there's so many things out there that are negative to, to markets. It is surprising that they have rallied and been able to rally so far. But we do know that bear markets, which we are still in a bear market, create the best rallies. And this could have been or could be just a bear market rally. Uh, but one of the big problems we're, we're seeing here, David, is a real lack of liquidity in markets. And I think a lot of that has to do with the news items coming up this week, which is FOMC jobs, and of course, a week from Tuesday, the election. Uh, let me just, we're, we're gonna touch on all these things in just a bit, but what, what do you mean by there's no liquidity uh, in, in the markets? What's going on? Volume is extremely light. The There is not a lot of retail par participants right now. Right now, you've got a lot of okay. funds just pushing money back and forth. Uh, you see these, when you, we call it like an accordion trade, I mean, if you rip up and a rip down, you know, it happens so quickly. And a lot of the action happens overnight when the markets are already thin to begin with. So if you look at the volume, the volume numbers are way off from where they should be. The actual participation is way off from where it should be. And we're, we're not seeing a real true market at work right now because of the lack of activity. Is this because of uh, some sort of bearish sentiment that's still persisting in the markets? Or perhaps we're seeing the beginning of, let's say, what we saw a couple of years ago with the repo market uh, uh, basically collapsing. We're seeing the beginnings of that. Well, you know, like I said, we're, we're seasonality says that we could be in a position to be to go higher as you come into the fourth quarter. Uh, again, I don't like the markets here, although I'm long, so I have to disclose that I am long right now. But I hate it, and I think there's a bit. I think there's a tremendous amount of room to the downside, and I think that you're going to see these markets collapse down. I think I'm looking for 50 to 70 percent in total when it's all said and done. And obviously, yeah. we're nowhere near that. We're about halfway there at the moment. But I think there's a lot more room to the downside. And I think a lot of what we're seeing held up here may be being held up, in my opinion, maybe by China, Saudi Arabia and Russia right now as they are big benefactors of what's going on in the current administration right now. Now, Todd, I know you've got algorithms that help you with the trades, but one has to wonder and ask you, if you're bearish in the markets, if you think a 50% to 70% decline is in order before all is said and done, why are you still long? Well, I, I'm not still long. I've gotten recently long into this okay. rally. Um, I, I think what you have to understand, David, is you cannot fight the markets. You cannot fight the tape. And the irrationality sometimes behind markets doesn't mean that I could be long and I could make money uh, or we could reverse out and end up shorting. And I will be, uh, when the market makes its bigger move, I'll be on the right side. I could potentially get chopped up in here being long because I don't think we're going higher, but it certainly it wouldn't surprise me if we popped a little bit higher first before going lower. So there, there's a lot of factors that go involved. But one thing you, you have to learn as a trader is you never have, you can never fight the tape or fight the action of the market because the markets can can last, or as, as John Maynard Keynes, who I'm not a big fan of, but he did say the markets can remain irrational a lot more longer than you and I can remain solvent. Now, okay. Um, some would argue that the uh, rebound that we saw last month or this past month has been more technical in nature than fundamental. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would think so. I would think it was more of a dead cat bounce or a, a a short covering rally. You know, you get so many shorts get on board into a market and suddenly they stop going down. Well, the buyers start to come in and they they force the shorts to cover 
which creates the panic buy, which is more or less, I think, what we saw. And in our business, we call it a rip your face off rally. <laughs> okay. Um, inflation expectations continue to fall, Todd. Is this going to ultimately bring down interest rates, which would, in effect, bring back the equities or risk on appetite for the equities? Well, I don't see the inflation falling. I see the inflation increasing. And for if it, and it, that would be if they would report the numbers correctly. They don't even report the numbers correctly. You know, again, we, the average family, other than a major emergency expense, spends most of their money on food and energy, which they give very little weight to. And for example, the CPI. Now, oil is not coming down. It may be lower now, but it's going back up. And we are still three times higher than we were two years ago. We're still paying four and a half to five dollars a gallon. Food is ridiculously high. And that's if you can get it, because, of course, the supply chain issue is there. And then, then you want to talk about that there's a potentially, and I don't have facts on this, but I have innuendo or rumor, which is that there's only about a 22-day left supply of diesel fuel, which is how the trains run and the trucks run. And if you can't deliver the goods, how are we going to eat? So to me, inflation is going to the roof, and the, the Fed is dead set on getting this 10-year notes probably somewhere near 5 to 6% before it's all done. They'll be raising rates on Wednesday, you can bet on. Yeah, no, you, this wasn't just a rumor. There were reports all over the internet. Um, media headlines have been uh, talking about the diesel shortage, supposedly only 25 days left as of a few days ago. Uh, interesting to see how that's gonna be resolved. So yeah, you're absolutely right. There's definitely uh, supply side squeezes that will keep prices up. But what about, uh, I've heard this argument, what about on the uh, money supply side? If you buy the argument that the increase in the money supply over the last two years was largely a big contributor to inflation, while the money supply is actually on its way down, it's been shrinking, is that going to tame inflation down the line, you think? Absolutely not. There's nope. there's no way that they can get away from inflation right now. They, they have... We have been set up to fail. We have been set up to have prices go through the roof. Okay, number one, if the United States does not re go back to reproducing and redrilling their own oil, then our prices are not going to come down in oil, which is 80% of the economy is based around fossil fuels, whether it be to deliver the goods or to make the goods. Because again, all the plastic that we use in this country are made with fossil fuels. So if you do not create your own production and keep oil at $30 a barrel, then inflation is going to run away. Because do you think Saudi Arabia is going to sit back and hold off? Natural gas is becoming short everywhere but here. We've got plenty. But of course, we don't want to frack it out and send it to Germany and send it to the UK. You already see the depression that they're going into. And we're going into winter now, which is even worse because wait till you see your heating bills. They're not coming down. And with the high cost of rates now, you know, farmers, and let's start go to, from the food chain, farmers are, are the producers, okay, they've got to borrow money. They don't pay the base rate that you or I might pay to borrow money. They pay over because they're considered risk assets. So the input cost to produce this food is going up. And then tied to that, a food shortage, which is here already, and it's mm -hmm. going to get worse before it gets better. I can't help but notice your poster behind you. You can have results or excuses, not both. So if you're saying that the government can't deliver the result, which is lower inflation, which is what presumably most people want, what is their excuse then, according to your poster, for allowing this to happen? Well, my excuse is that the, the progressives hate America. My excuse is that they're trying to destroy the American middle class. I mean, I, when you look at some of the things that we have done here, okay, when you just stop drilling oil, for example, okay, and you out of nowhere, you have no plan to get the green energy, which is fine. You want to get the green energy? Great. I don't believe in it, but great. You want to get there? Tell me how you're going to get there. Fix the, the power grid. The power grid could not support it. You saw the story in California. Buy a Tesla on Monday, but you can't charge it till Monday night after nine o'clock. There is not, the power grid is not set up to handle what they want. Give me a plan. In the meantime, don't break the middle class with this high inflation while you're buying oil from Saudi Arabia and draining your SPR and giving that oil to China when you have to defend your own country first and your own people first, which they have totally not done. They're looking for the great reset. They're looking to bring this country into to, to the middle class to its knees and come to a two-party, a two-class system. Because when you look at it, they destroyed small business.
All right, Sorry. you've got no competition for Walmart and Amazon. You've got no competition for Google, no competition for Facebook. So where, where does it end, David? That's the problem. You eliminate competition, that eliminates small business, it eliminates the, the appetite for capitalism and to grow further. You said they're preparing for the great reset. The great reset of what exactly, Todd? I think that we're having an, a, a organized central bank, Federal Reserve, thing to break down to come to a one currency, a digital currency, a world currency that will then give them total control of how they want to print and spend and pay the money because there'll be no more printing. They'll push a button. But not only that, they'll be able to track every move you make from the time you're born to the time you die. And I think that this becomes a much bigger problem because for Americans, they're destroying and taking away much of our freedom. Sorry, you're, are you are you referring to central bank digital currencies? I'm just trying to pinpoint what you're referring I'm talking, to. Exactly. The, the central banking system wants to go to a global coin of a digital type currency. Okay. okay. They want to eliminate paper. All okay. central banks. Eliminate paper, they're eliminating privacy. Okay. Because they, wherever you spend it, they know where you're spending it at. Okay. They want to bring the world into a total socialist, a socialistic world. Okay. Where there is not a middle class. There's a rich and a poor. And they're trying to make that be the great reset. Okay. okay. Uh, which developments in the news or what uh, data have you looked at that may support your thesis, Todd? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve hiking rates into a into a recession. Okay, there there there's for starters, destroying your own natural resources so that you can buy them for Saudi Arabia from Saudi Arabia allowing the war in Russia and Ukraine to take place to create a food shortage. You know, these things should have never happened. And if you had a strong leader in the White House, they would not have happened and we'd still be in total control. But of course, this administration has given the keys of the car to everybody in, in overall, and in my opinion, an attempt to destroy the America I grew up in. All right, midterm elections are next week. Give us some highlights we need to watch out for. Well, I mean, listen, historically, the House changes going into the, that no matter who's in office, no matter how good they are, the House changes sides. So I'm assuming that it's going to be the Republicans are going to take back the House, which is a good thing. Not that it's Republican, because I don't want any party ever in full control. I didn't like it when Trump had all Republican. I don't like it that Biden has all Democrat. I want somebody in there fighting for the other side. Uh, I, you know, the Senate's going to be a toss up, but the, many people are very unhappy with what is going on here. They're unhappy paying $5 for gas. They're unhappy. And so I, you could see a major red wave. And if you see that, you know, if you don't see a switch, I think there's going to be big trouble in this country. I think there's already big trouble. You can already see the divisiveness and the hatred that's going on. So I think if, 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 if the Republicans don't at least take the House, I think there's going to be a lot of funny business. And I think it can only be done by manipulation and by stealing it versus allowing the free elections to take place. Okay, and uh, specific platform highlights that we need to watch for. So inflation being one of them, what else? Well, I think the biggest thing is, again, we'll go back to oil, which is the, the simplest solution to where we are. Okay, if you, if, you, if you go back to creating your own oil and becoming a net exporter again, A, you bring the price, the price of oil back down to $30 or less per barrel which then destroys, takes down the prices at the pump. It takes down the cost of delivery. So it reduces the, it reduces costs all the way along. And I think that's what you'd like to see from the Republicans. I, I think that all of this spending that we continue to see, these budget increases, this, this massive money supply, because all what is the money supply really doing? It's only taking away my money, your money, okay, and, and giving it to the government. So it's another form of taxation without representation. You know, the inflation and, and, and adding to the money supply is does nothing, okay, because you can never borrow your way out of debt, okay? The only way you can get out of debt is to pay off your debt and reduce your spending so you can get there. But unfortunately, they want to spend, 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 even with this ridiculous Inflation Reduction Act, which is stupid. I mean, everything they've done is stupid, plus letting in millions of illegals, okay, because we're paying for those. Okay, seventy percent of California's budget is to finance illegal aliens. Now, would you want to pay seventy percent? All right. So let's assume we get a red wave. All right, like you like you mentioned. What are some legislative or perhaps uh, policy changes that you expect to happen uh, in the remaining two years of Biden's um, uh, time in the White House? 
I expect nothing to happen. I expect that to put a standstill to all the ridiculous bills that they're trying to get through. Well, that's something, I expect, right? I mean, vetoing his. Right. Uh, I, I expect I expect the Republicans at this point to step in the in the middle and not allow a lot of these things to go on. The student loan forgiveness, which was, by the way is is illegal anyway, so you could, he could never sign that off without a vote, anyways. But again, I think that we're going to see nothing happen until there's another election uh, for a president. Because they're, they're, these parties are never going to agree. I mean, right now you have they're going to they want to refill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, the SPR, okay, at eighty at eighty dollars per gallon. The Democrats voted down when Trump is in office to refill the SPR when gas was twenty four dollars a gallon. But to drain the SPR to fifty year lows is stupid, anyways, because that oil is supposed to be there for wartime, not to lower the price of gas at the pump, which it hasn't done, anyways. Mm. Yeah. So uh, what about foreign policy? You think uh, Ukraine aid, giving aid to Ukraine? Uh, Biden was reportedly uh, frustrated as Zelensky on a June uh, on, a, on a June call earlier this summer about how ungrateful the uh, Ukrainian president was. He later came out and you know publicly thanked America for uh, for its efforts. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's been some pressure on Biden to stop giving aid to Ukraine. What's going to happen with that, you think? Well, he should stop giving aid to Ukraine. First of all, they needed to, they needed to stop this war before it ever happened, which it should have been done. If you had a leader that had any stones, they would have, they would, this war would have never happened. Okay. Russia is partying and celebrating, making more money than ever with what's going on because they're holding up everybody for natural gas. They're holding up, you know, they've got, they've got the world by the tail right now because they're in total control. Of the of the supply of natural gas to Germany to the UK and that needs to stop. Okay, and uh, giving money to Ukraine for what? So that these politicians can can scarf off the top and put more money in their pocket. I mean, remember every bill that gets passed, which is what's wrong with with our government and both sides of the aisle right now, is everybody wants to pad something in so they can get a little piece for themselves or for their lobbyists, and that's the bigger problem with the entire system right now, which is why they need to go to term limits. That's a story for a whole nother day. But at the end of the day, right now I'm looking for a freeze and I'm looking for a potential to go back to producing our own oil and becoming a net exporter once again. I think that's a possibility if you can get a Republican House. Okay. Switching gears a little bit, I'm going to talk about another uh, piece of news that's been making headlines. Twitter is now going private because Elon Musk just successfully uh, bought out the company after months of back and forth and legal battles and whatnot. But he did close the deal and uh, Twitter is going private. He fired the top three executives of the company. Uh, supposedly, they were going to get a golden parachute of uh, uh, triple digit millions. Uh, that isn't really happening anymore because Elon Musk said that there was just cause for firing them. They misled him on reporting vital data on Twitter, including how many spam bots there actually are on the platform. And so now apparently they're getting let go without any severance. What's your take on all this? Thank God for Elon Musk. I love a guy that stands up. First of all, he's brilliant, right? I mean, he's a little quirky, but he's brilliant. All right. And I think he's doing the right thing. You can't continue to cover up and hide underneath the carpeting, everything that goes wrong. And if they legitimately are breaking or violating with what the information I gave them, then they don't deserve to get a severance package. We already know that the social media in this country has been more to the left than to the right. It hasn't been center because if you have a conservative opinion, you you they take it down on a regular basis. And, and this is where I think that uh, Elon Musk is stepping up. And so if, 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 the, if the people that are getting fired that were supposed to get the golden parachute, but they were violating what was supposed to be done, then they have no right to get the severance package. In fact, they should get a jail sentence and not a severance package. Yeah. Elon Musk has repeatedly said that his goal over this deal was to bolster free speech. He said, I am against censorship that goes far beyond the law. If people want less free speech, they will ask government to pass laws to that effect. He said that uh, Twitter should be more reluctant to delete things, to your point. But just to play devil's advocate, aren't you concerned that one of the largest social media networks in the world is now a private company, essentially owned by one person? Wouldn't that, you know, present problems to free speech in itself? Well, I think it's owned by one person and his investors, and he's still got to have a board. He's still got to report private or not. And and I think that again, the people will speak if, if they will. If they don't like what he's doing, they will not fund him. He will not make money mm. with his platform. 
So I, I think that, see, that's where the free market has to take place because if I don't like Twitter because they're not posting things or they're posting too much or if they're putting hate speech up, which they should not, that's the only thing that should be censored is stuff like Kanye West did. Okay, that should be censored because that's hate speech and that's creating riots. But normal commentary should never be censored. But the, 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 the consumer will say if it's good or not. If the consumer doesn't like what Elon Musk is doing, they're going to knock off of Twitter and they're not going to have his advertising dollars, which is how they make money. They don't make money any other, any other way. So I'm not, I have no problem whether it be private or public because even public companies are pretty much private. I mean, Amazon may be a public company, but you know who runs it, right? Jeff Bezos runs that company no matter what we think it was going on. So to me, it's the, the consumer will say whether or not they should be in business or not. You don't own any Twitter stock yourself, full disclosure? I do not, no, I, I didn't. I, I played with it a little bit, but I hated it. And when they when they went to all the blocking and everything, I just got rid of all of it. I had no desire to be a part of it, but if I could buy it now with him in, in control privately, I would buy it back. <laughs> you voted with you voted with your feet. You you walked out, literally. I uh, walked away, baby. That's you walked it. away. It's interesting because stock actually did pretty well this year. Uh, I, I think in light of the news that uh, Elon Musk was, um, um, you know, participating in this buyout. It's been rallying in the last half of the year, despite the tech sector overall doing poorly. And last note on this, what about the changes that Musk proposed or is proposing? He's, you know, making all sorts of polls on his own Twitter, asking people what uh, he should do about it. One of the changes he wants to make is to make this sort of a multi, uh, you know, a multi-dynamic platform. He wants to introduce payment methods to this. Uh, he wants to uh, potentially look into uh, uh, charging people with verified accounts, a monthly fee. Uh, the fee needs to be determined, of course. Um, I'm personally against the last one. I don't want to pay $20 a month or whatever, whatever he's charging just to keep my blue check mark. Anyway, how do you feel about some of these changes that you've been hearing? Well, I, I think changes are good, but I think, you know, very much similar, let's say, to Amazon Prime, the market will tell them if it's reasonable or not. You know, people aren't going to pay because they have to. If they think that it's worthwhile and mm -hmm. his changes are worthwhile and he cleans it up, it may very much be worth the $20 a month or whatever the number happens to be, right? Right. So I think the market will tell him if it's a good do, do or a not a good do, but it, it certainly change is needed at Twitter. And certainly as a payment method, it could be very good. I mean, you know, there's a lot of payment methods out there, but none of them are very good. And since he was the designer of PayPal in the beginning, he may be able to do a better job here because PayPal, when he was in charge, was a hell of a lot better than it is today. Todd, good talk. And uh, always we'll a great see pleasure, David. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lynn. Stay tuned for more.